Welcome to LA Union Station, located in Los Angeles, California. Approved in 1926 and opened in 1939, LA Union Station was designed to consolidate rail services from Union Pacific, Santa Fe, and Southern Pacific into one station owned by the city. There's a missing route map over there. Fix that while you're here. There are many more route tasks to discover. Make sure to apply the route maps, put up the anniversary banners, hang up the hats, and visit the hot dog stands. Clark Smith, your shift supervisor, would like to speak with you. The Antelope Valley Line runs for over 70 miles from the bustling heart of LA to Lancaster, the western tip of the Mojave Desert. 
The railroad along the Santa Clara River originally opened in 1876 and was operated by Southern Pacific as a connection to the National Rail Network. In 1979, due to falling demand, this line ceased operation. In 1990, the Los Angeles County Transportation Commission purchased the right-of-way from Southern Pacific. Passenger services as far as Santa Clarita began operation in 1992. When the Northridge earthquake hit in 1994, plans to extend the line north to Antelope Valley were expedited by over 10 years to aid relief efforts. U.S. Navy Seabees and a legion of workers from the L.A. County Public Works Department constructed stations in just a few days, rather than the three to six months they usually take. Passenger services started on this extension less than a week after the earthquake. Today, this important commuter line carries over 5,700 people in and out of L.A. each day. Run to the hills and experience the hefty power of modern American diesel. Tackle the tough terrain of Californian canyons with the Antelope Valley Line between the sprawling Los Angeles cityscape and the desert bushes of Lancaster in almighty Metrolink traction. West Coast Rails are yours to explore in Train Sim World, Antelope Valley Line. In this training module, you will be learning to operate this EMD F125 Spirit diesel locomotive. During this brief introduction, you will be taken through the critical driving controls and performing passenger operations. When you're ready to begin, climb aboard. Sit in the engineer's seat. You'll now go through the steps needed to take over this locomotive. You will need to set the generator field switch. This needs to be enabled for the locomotive to generate power.
This locomotive requires the reverser handle to be inserted before operation. Switch the front headlights on. Regardless of the time of day or weather, all locomotives must have their headlights on. You'll need to set the brakes to the correct mode to allow them to be controlled by this cab. We can now begin loading. It is time to depart. Close the passenger doors. The reverser determines the direction of travel. The master controller controls both the throttle and dynamic brakes. Dynamic brakes use the locomotive's electric traction motors to generate resistance to reduce the wear of the brake pads. Apply a small amount of throttle. The automatic brakes are controlled with their own handle, but will blend the dynamic brakes in the air brakes. The air brakes will apply braking force to every car in this formation. Now release the brakes. Coasting is a method used to efficiently maintain speed and reduce motor stress and maintenance requirements. Keeping to speed limits is important. If you begin overspeeding, slow the train using the master controller's dynamic brake range. The EMD F125 is a passenger locomotive manufactured by Electromotive Diesel for the North American market. It's powered by a Caterpillar C12720V20 diesel engine, rated at 4,700 horsepower, and is capable of speeds up to 125 miles per hour. When it launched in 2017, it was the first new passenger locomotive in North America in 15 years. To date, 40 have been produced, all of which were supplied to Metrolink. The F-125 features a modern, streamlined body, designed by Voslo Espana.
approaching the station. Begin applying a small amount of braking force using the automatic brake to bring the train to a gentle stop. Nice job. The train has safely come to a stop. You can now begin loading. Good work. That concludes all the basics of operating this train. In this training module, you will be learning to operate the Rotom commuter car, manufactured by Hyundai Rotom. During this brief introduction, you will be taken through the critical driving controls and performing passenger operations. When you're ready to begin, climb aboard. Sit in the engineer's seat.
you'll now go through the steps needed to take over this train. You will need to set the generator field switch. This needs to be enabled for the locomotive to generate power. Switch the front headlights on. Regardless of the time of day or weather, all locomotives must have their headlights on. You'll need to set the automatic brake cutout to cut in to allow the braking to be controlled from this cab. Okay, it's time to depart. Close the passenger doors. The master controller controls both the throttle and dynamic brakes. Dynamic brakes use the locomotive's electric traction motors to generate resistance to reduce the wear of the brake pads. The automatic brakes are controlled with their own handle, but will blend the dynamic brakes and air brakes. The air brakes will apply braking force to every car in this formation. Now, release the brakes. Coasting is a method used to efficiently maintain speed and reduce motor stress and maintenance requirements. Keeping the speed limits is important. If you begin over speeding, slow the train using the master controller's dynamic brake range. The Rotom commuter cars were introduced in 2010. To date, Metrolink has received 117 of them. As part of Metrolink's commitment to passenger safety, these cars incorporate the latest CEM technology. This incorporates redesigned seats, tables, and special energy absorbing zones at the end of each car. Metrolink was the first rail operator in the U.S. to incorporate CEM in passenger trains. Cab cars like this one allow a locomotive to be operated remotely from the other end of the formation, preventing the need for runarounds or additional locomotives.
approaching the station. Begin applying a small amount of braking force using the automatic brake to bring the train to a gentle stop. Nice job! The train has safely come to a stop. You can now begin loading. Good work. That concludes all the basics of operating this train.